Hello and welcome to Mastery Tutoring where you find the best tutors for mathematics and physical sciences in South Africa. The question on the screen is a question from Euclidean Geometry which is going to help you uh, perfect your skills when it comes to the application of the theorems. It reads as follows. O is a point on the circle with center M. O is also the center of a second circle. DA cuts the smaller circle at C and D1 is equal to X. Express the following angles in terms of X, stating the reasons. So we are given two circles, as you can see on the screen, and therefore the two circles actually are joined or they intersect at point A and B. And the center of the smaller circle is O, and this, while the center of the bigger circle is M, you know. And then also we have other points on the circle such as point C, and D, and then also we also have lines that intersect at some points there. And then we are required to solve the five questions on the screen. Um, and then now we're just gonna start with D1. So we actually required to solve these questions in terms of X. So everything must be in terms of X, whether it can be just X or like X times two or 90 degrees plus x or 90 degrees minus x depending on what you get but then it has to be an x it shouldn't be in terms of letters okay cool so starting with question one right we're required to determine or to represent angle d2 in terms of x so now to solve this question actually uh, we're going to start off by saying that angle b2 angle b2 is equal to angle a3 now the reason to this is because So now look, angle B2 is equal to angle A3, no? Now the reason why I'm saying this is because when you look on the diagram, right, can you see that OB and OA are equal? They are equal because they are both radius, they are, they are both radii, and therefore it makes the triangle OAB to be an isosceles triangle. Another, another reason that you can give actually, you can give actually for this is that, um, you know, um, the base angles are equal. So therefore, when the base angle are equal, the fact that the two lines, the fact that the OB and OA, uh, they, they equal, it gives us, you know, um, a reason to conclude that the base angles are equal. Okay, cool. And then now, um, can you see on the diagram that, so B2 is equal to B1. So B2 is equal to D1. Now the reason for this is because So actually both lines are subtended from chord OA. Now you remember there's a theorem, you know, from the list of theorems in, in Euclidean geometry that if you have two angles that are subtended from the same chord or the same arc or two separate chords that are equal, those angles are equal. I'm going to repeat myself again, right? There's a theorem in Euclidean geometry that states that if you have two angles that are subtended from the same chord or the same uh, arc those two angles have to be equal so this is the same thing this is the same thing here so both angle b1 and angle d uh, sorry angle b2 and angle d1 are subtended on chord oa therefore they have to be equal moving right along so now we can now write this <clears throat> b2 is equal to x because d1 that is equal to x okay now we can actually conclude that actually that a3 a3 is also equal to x now a3 is equal to x because a3 is equal to b2 but b2 is equal to x so that's how it goes now can you see on the diagram can you see the following on the diagram So um, angle D2 and, and angle A3 are equal because they are both subtended from chord OB. So I'm going to repeat myself again. There's a, there's a theorem that states 
that um, if you have two angles that are subtended from the same chord or the same arc, those angles have to be equal. So this is the reason why actually I'm using this theorem here. So without further ado, we can now conclude that actually D2 it is equal to X. Why? Because um, A3 is equal to X. So there you go, guys. Uh, we solved the question, but then actually I uh, have an alternative uh, way of solving this this question so let me just show you how you'd go about it alternate so solving the same question right so this this question I mean this solution or this method of solving the question will be very short and quick but remember it is good to understand both of them because when you, it help there they're gonna help you understand more so that you know when you come across a new question you know you sort of like have the courage you know to to give it a try than to be stranded and and be limited you know you shouldn't be limited in fact you shouldn't be a square mind when it comes to this you know you should be smart you should be explore uh, every every possible way of solving a question so now the the alternate method is as follows right can you see that on the diagram that oa is equal to ob OA, OA, both OA and OB are, are radius, are radii. So these are equal radii. Now that's going to be the reason that we're going to give here. Equal radii, right? And then now, what have we learned about um, if you have a triangle that has two equal sides, what can you conclude from that? What can you conclude from that? Excuse me. Um, when you have now, when you have two two equal, uh, what is it, uh, radii, we can conclude that D two is equals to D one because these are, uh, are angles on the same chord. So angles on. Because OA is equal to OB. So now there's a theorem that states that if you have two angles that are subtended from the same chord or the same arc, um, those angles have to be equal. And then it also adds uh, that if the two angles actually um, are subtended from separate chords, but then those two chords are equal in length, therefore those angles have to be equal as well. So now that is the theorem that we used here. Therefore, D2, it is going to be X. <clears throat> now, that is our value for X, right? I mean, that is our value for D2. So, we fully and finally answered question 1. Now, we're going to move to question 2 of this question. So now, uh, question two is it says that we need to find angle O A B in terms of X. So now, as you can see on the diagram, actually we can conclude the following from the diagram. Angle O A B is equal to D two. Now the reason to this is because um, angles on the, on the same chord are are equal so angles subtended on the same chord or from the same chord are equal so these two angles actually are subtended from chord OB so therefore they have to be equal these two angles have to be equal if you can check OAB is this angle, it's A3 actually. It's A3 from the diagram here. And then uh, D2, there it is there. But can you see that they, these two angles are subtended from this chord? Therefore, those two angles have to be equal. We already calculated that angle um, OAB is equal to. I mean, sorry, angle D2 it is equal to X from the previous question. Therefore, we can just go right ahead and, and equate OAB to X. It 
in, in, in question three, we are required to find angle OBA in terms of X. So, given the diagram as you see on the right, I can, I can actually say the following. So angle OBA, it is equal to angle OAB. Now, the reason to this is because Angle OBA it is equal to angle OAB because um, the two uh, angles. So we have quadratic I. So OA is equal to OB. And therefore, uh, when these two when these two length, the two uh, uh, um, o, OA it is the radius of the smaller circle, and then as well as OB. So now because of that actually it makes these angles to be equal. When these two angles are equal, I mean these two angles are equal because this is equal to that. Let me use double lines. So these two lines are equal. This line is equal to that. So OA is equal to OB and therefore it makes the, the what is it, the angles to be equal. These angles are equal. So now we can now include that OBA that is going to be, we've already calculated uh, angle OAB, which we found it to be X. Therefore, this is going to X. So I hope this makes sense. Um, you know, it's Euclidean geometry. You, you, I mean, it's one of those questions where, as much as it is my favorite, but then it's one of those uh, chapters where you don't just run around, you know, when you're solving a question. You need to think carefully, and you need to be, you know, sure about the theorem, that you're applying. You don't, you don't want to be applying the wrong theorem because sometimes, you know, when the, when the diagram is very complicated, it's easy to, to end up uh, applying the wrong theorem, applying a theorem that is not applicable in that case. You know? So it's, you need to be very careful and you need to take your time when you're solving such questions. So question four, uh, we are required to find angle O, A, O, B in terms of X. So now for this one actually, A, O, B, it is going to be 180 degrees minus 2X. Now O, A, B is going to be 180 degrees minus 2X. You already know that actually A3 or A or AB is equal to X and then uh, B2 or as we would like to call it OBA it is equal to X. So now when you add these angles in triangle OAB they're going to give you 180 degrees and then now you have to manipulate in such a way that you make AOB the subject of the formula and therefore you end up, 108, you end up with 180 degrees minus 2X. So now, to give a reason for this, we can say some angles sum of angles in triangle A O A B. Uh, sum up to 180 degrees. Therefore, it makes OAB to be equal to um, uh, 180 degrees minus 2x. So now we're going to be going to the last question, which is question 5. So in question 5c, we are required to, in, in question 5, we are required to find angle C, uh, which is uh, found on the circumference of the smaller circle. Okay, so now uh, when you look at the diagram, right, you can see that actually angle O, 
AOB is equal to 2C. Okay, this one X or U written in cross. So angle OAB is equal to 2 times angle C. Now the reason to this is that angle at center is equal to is twice angle at center is equal to two times the angle uh, at the circumference. So angle at center is equal to two is equal to two times the angle at circumference. Therefore, we can manipulate this to have C two. So to have C which is equal to O A O B over two. Now we, al we already know what O A B A O B is rather, so we can just simply substitute there. O A B is equal to 180 degrees minus two. So we're going to substitute 100 in minus two x, not minus two, but minus two x over two. Now this leaves us with angle C being equals to 90 minus X. Now this is the solution to the equation folks. I hope you really really learned something here. Uh, if there's anything that you don't understand feel free to leave a comment and um, for those who are new to our channel please subscribe and then also um, that was your tutor Kara and he's signing out now. So goodbye.